uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, down the coast into South Africa. And they're desert plants. One man, uh, Mark Dimmitt, actually spread the popularity around the world. And uh, think of this, in Asia, they're essentially an easy monetize. You know, they look like it, so it's like one of the most popular plants there now. This is what I collect. This is my passion, is these. And they're just so easy to grow. You can see the codices already getting nice sizes. What our claim to fame is we teach people how to grow the plants. They're not gonna die, you know. We specialize in soil mixes. There's still a place in Arizona where those grow, called rainbow cactus, because when they're not in a greenhouse, each time the season changes or whatever, you get a different band of color. Oh, is that right? And look at this. I want, to, I want you to see this. Mellow cactus is from Cuba, actually near Guantanamo Bay. They're incredibly rare now. Like this is considered red flag critically endangered, meaning it's probably going to be extinct where it's from. But we have growers that grow them, propagate them. Tucson is famous around. If you're a plant nerd in the world, yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Hi. Hi. this is our potting room. We kind of we don't insist, but we like our customers to come back because we show them what the plant looks like, how to raise them. But this is our mix, our basic mix for cactus and succulents, and. It's coconut husk. Check this out. Oh, juicy. <laughs> it's a sponge. Now, you can see this mix when you water, because you should water generously, runs through, they get their drink, but it stays aerated. Yeah. Not compact and wet where the roots grow, rot, grow, rot, and the plant gives up. It's made of microtubes of air, cushions the nut when it falls out of the tree, floats in the water to help spread. It's made out of lignin, not cellulose, there's no sugar. So with this mix, it aerates, we teach everybody, do not water till it dries out, literally sticking your finger in. And it lasts a long time with that sponge thing. So you get this thing that makes 30% more roots. And more roots means the plant grows better. So you can see, we don't just throw a color in. And that, see that rock there? That's to remind people before they water, lift that rock up, stick your finger in. Mm -hmm. until they learn their plant. Yeah. So we, we force people to learn how to take care of their plants. Okay guys, so we just left Eco Grow. There's the store there. It's a really cool place in there. It's a really cool plant shop. So here we're at another nursery. Christine's trying to rebuild her stock of yeah. plants. Yeah, so sad to sell them all off before we move. So this is a prickly pear snow. And it doesn't have those glockids, right, that we don't want. What's the most expensive plant you've ever seen at a nursery? <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. Let's show that. Let's, show yeah, that? let's go over there and see that. Ten thousand yeah. <laughs> dollar. Twenty years old. Adenium obesum. Wow. <laughs> and they, years. they plant them a little bit lower. So when you pot them up, you want to expose the roots, and then it gives them a more unique look. Oh. But they've got a bunch of little ones here too. You know which one I'd pick for you here? Which one? This one right here. I looked at that little tubby one, 60 bucks that one. Yeah. For that little body. You remember mine, right? The yep. size of the Does that make you want to eat them? The cute. <laughs> Welcome in. Thank you. Have fun looking around? Yeah, I really like it here. Yeah. Hey guys, we're at B&B Nursery now. Let me show you this cactus greenhouse. Look at all those cactus. Oh my goodness. Look at this one. How cute is that? It's a Mexican snowball. Here's the woolly jacket prickly pear. Look at the texture on those. That would be gorgeous to have. I like this one back here. And that one's got a, a lot of nice starts in it. And those are $10. That's a nice size for $10. Look at that. I'm in their outdoor section now and it's really cool to see all the different sizes of them. So, you know, like inside we're looking at the babies. And then out here, you can see, here's the Mexican fence post again. And then over here are the medium-sized ones. So that would be a good size to start out with if I was, if I was going to be growing them inside the house. You know, they'd be easier to repot at this stage um, than, let's see, can you see them? Oh, the ones over there. Yeah, those are the bigger ones. That would be a little more of a struggle to try to, you know, repot for me by myself. So I might have to go with something like that size. The other ones that I really like are the San Pedro cactus. So these are really cool too. You get a good, you know, a nice vibrant green 
uh, but you don't have all of the spines. So, you know, they got pretty minimal spines here. So you don't have to deal with too much. That would be pretty easy to repot. So I don't know, I might end up going with one of those. Um, the Mexican fence post, they do have more spines, but they also have this cool, you know, down the ridges, they have the white, which is really, you know, kind of unusual and striking. These, like these you like the Mexican like fence post? Square looking. I'm checking prices too, so these are 65 for that size. Um, where's the little ones we just looked at? Okay, these guys are 35 up here. Which those would be really nice too if you just wanted one for like, you know, on, I don't know, its own little plant stand or a desk or tabletop or something. But that'll be too small if I'm having it on the floor, right? So that's why I'm thinking I need to go with that size. And then I can have it, I can add height to it by, you know, adding a plant stand, like a short one or something to it. I can figure that out later. Okay, here's the large Mexican fence post here. These guys are 200. But look at, look how big that is. That's, that's a huge pot. Oh, I like the hairy ones too. These white ones, nice texture. A uh, cactus just adds so much texture to a space. I mean, you know, there's some that, well, that's got lots of texture too, right? But that thing will stab a mother. We looked at the prickly pear woolly jacket inside, the little one, or, you know, kind of like small, small, medium. And then these are the larger ones out here. So you can get an idea of what that's going to look like when it grows up. They're really cool, very textural, very sculptural. I think that they do have some glockids, but they're not, they're not like severe like some of the other prickly pear. Like, see, nothing came off on me there. Normally you could brush your, well you wouldn't want to, but if you were brushing your finger up one of the prickly pears that had a lot of glockids, they would just be like puffing into the air like that. So see nothing. Okay, so those could be an option. Definitely like those. Even from back here, the prickly pear woolly jackets, they have a nice silhouette to them and their hair kind of catches the light and creates almost like a halo around them. Here's a gorgeous Adenium obesum. Look at that, that is a beauty. Okay, the delivery guys are here. They're getting the sectional out. So yeah, right there, I think we'll be fine. State sale, 350 bucks. At the state sales, you know, there's like lines. First, you gotta get a number and you wait in line. And then you hope that as soon as they open the doors, you can race in and get exactly what you want because they show pictures online ahead of time. So you can kind of get an idea of what they're gonna be having, but you don't know what the price is gonna be and you don't know the exact condition until you show up, right, and see it in person. So we were there at six, they didn't open till nine, so you show up early, you get your number, and Michael was like number 26 and I was 27. So I was like, oh shoot, there's 20, you know, 25 more people in line ahead of me that could be trying to get the same couch. I was really glad when everyone kind of like raced in the door and no one was going for the couch yet. They were all like going for antiques and stuff. And yeah, you can get such good deals. Can't wait to go to next weekend's estate sales, see what else we can find. I'm still gonna have to find a rug, right? An area rug for in the living room. And then would you put an area rug in the dining room too? No. No? I, I thought about that. At John's, he's got a really nice white rug with the table. It makes it look all nice and like separated, you know? So it does have a nice look, but I understand like if you're like flinging food or dropping it off the table like the Michael bugs. might be doing. <laughs> Guilty as charged, yeah. I forgot to mention the delivery of the sectional, how much that cost. It was $45, which I thought was a good deal because we didn't have to deal with anything. Like they moved it and dealt with the whole thing and it just made it so much more smoothly than if Michael and I were like struggling with it, you know? I was like, um, yeah, we're, that's a really big couch even to try to squeeze into our eight foot bed truck. We would have had to do it like piece by piece. And then still, I think it was too tall, right? It was like 29 inches. I don't yeah, know. it barely would have fit it in would, her truck. Yeah, it would have got it all scuffed up. Stuff. Yeah. I think I'll do that from now on with, well, anything big that I ever have again, which I don't, I mean, a bed, I guess. Otherwise, everything we already, like I already have the table that fits in the back of the truck. You know what else about that delivery charge? If we'd gotten anything else, it would have been included in that. Yeah, so that that's was, the thing. 
<laughs> we could have gotten another stove. We, I'm trying to keep it yeah, pretty simple, but yeah. So had we gotten anything else, any other furniture, it was all, it would have been all included. Um, but yeah, just, just a little uh, sectional. Hey guys, we're in Costco right now. Look at the pink hair dryer. T3. Oh my goodness, that's a beauty, isn't it? That's fun. They also have the rose gold and white. I'd really like to get a new one. I don't know. Rose gold and white or pink. It looks like they have plenty of them right now, so I'll wait a little longer. If you guys have used this one, the T3 Featherweight 2, I've never actually used a T3 product, so let me know if you have tried these. Um, and if they're good, well, I'll come back and snatch one of those up. I just got one of those mirrors too to replace my old one that I had in Maui that I couldn't bring with me because um, it has the light up. And these light up ones, I never realized how expensive they were until I started looking here on the mainland when we got here. At Bed Bath & Beyond, those mirrors, what, those light up mirrors were like 100 bucks or something? 119, I think. Yeah, like, yeah. and then like even higher, like 140, 150. I was like, oh my gosh. Here at Costco, just for, you know, I mean, it's just like the vanity style one, right? Um, it's not like huge or anything, but it works and they're 20 bucks for the light up, you know, the ring around it. One of our favorite home cleaning products, baking soda. Good deal too for that big bag. And then we need mop and I don't, I don't know if they have mops here though, huh? We, we have paper towels in the store. Here. I yeah, think so. Okay, so yeah, I was looking for the brooms. Oh, I found command strips here too. So I'm not going to be, you know how in Maui we were able to do, you know, all kinds of projects um, with the walls and stuff. I'm not going to be doing that at this house. So I'm going to try to keep it real renter friendly and I'm not going to be poking holes in the walls and things like that. So because <laughs> I, I don't want to have to go back and fill them. Um, and this place is stricter than like our Maui place was super like a lot of leeway, you know, yeah. and they're just like really cool there. Um, well, they're, they were the owners, and this is a management company. Yeah, so, so like he's just doing it. Trying to protect owner, it, so. right? And you know, I mean, I've heard all kinds of stories about tenants, and he's probably been through it all too. Yeah. So anyway, got a pack of command strips. Get those. Sixteen pounders, so that's really good. That's a really good price too. It's like, I don't know, fifteen bucks or sixteen bucks here, and the, that'll last. There's a bunch of them in there. Only three eighty nine for two gallons. Okay, so we got some white vinegar. Okay, Costco haul, we got our command strips, pack of bumpers. Batteries. Batteries. We got your Arizona map. A Brita, the water. Brita. Filter. Vinegar and baking soda. Yes. Okay, we're back at the homestead. This is our vacation rental that we've been staying in. We're gonna do another load here. Take it over to the house. Sorry, it's a little bit messy and everything's a little discombobulated here as we've been packing this morning. So back here is the glass table, so uh, the dining room table. The bottom is a big acrylic piece and that's in our storage unit right now. A little more. Yeah. So I guess I can't bring my luggage in this Not room. Not quite yet. Huh? yet. <laughs> okay. Does it seem like this is the never ending move? Like we just keep moving. Perpetual move. It's just like this giant long move. It's just like never ending. Two months of moving. Yeah, really. Have to We're definitely going to be going back to LA, Palm Springs, um, you know, because we have family there. So go do meetups. Definitely going to do meetups in Phoenix too. I think that'd be fun. We checked out of our vacation rental this morning. So we're all done and we are now here. Uh, we moved over our stuff. Uh, we still have our storage unit. So we decided to put the couch against that wall. At first we had it coming out from here, but it was kind of like, it made it a little bit, you know, it kind of made it awkward with the door because uh, it's so large. So we ended up putting it against that and just blocking that closet because we don't need to use all that storage space anyway, because there's already, you know, there's plenty of other closets in the house. And then we'll have a rug. And then we'll get Michael a nice little coffee table. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a better way to do it. Yeah, that way it doesn't jet out here yeah. too. It opens see, this up more. Like sitting there, you can see out there and there and see the fireplace. And it's still, I mean, and it, there's I don't room plan on using this that much, but if we do, it's still accessible. Because yeah, it's accessible. I mean, you know, it's it probably looks a little awkward with the door right there, but that's not a big deal for us because we're going to be coming through the carport door anyway. Probably. Yeah. Where are you thinking you're gonna have your uh, your IKEA lamp that you got? 
Oh yeah, definitely in that corner there. Yeah, coming out. From and then there. also, I hope to have a chair here, just in the winter. For the yeah, fire. get a chair. What kind do you think you you're thinking about? Uh, I'll let you pick up one. It's nice having an elbow room. Bump, definitely. <laughs> It'll be really nice having two bathrooms. Yes, definitely. And we'll have our own space finally. Christine's been doing her eyelashes and hair. Her dance. <laughs> You're waiting to get in. So we've got this four lamp from IKEA. And it's that style. They have table lamps in that style and the floor lamp. So this is the floor lamp. Oh, look, it works. Isn't that romantic? And it has a dimmer. <laughs> so there's the light. Michael wants to have it back there so he can sit there and read with it. So yeah, I'm gonna look for a rug that we can have here and then I'll have to search for a coffee table too. Maybe at one of the state sales I can find a deal on one or something. So we'll do the coffee table rug and then I have some cool art that I'm gonna be putting up, uh, I think right here gonna be like the earth like sunrise over the earth on this side right now I'm measuring out for rugs because I'm trying to figure out exactly what size I need for each area and then in the bedroom um, we're gonna be sleeping on the floor for I don't know how long but <laughs> we're gonna have a rug in here sometime hey guys we just got back from an online auction pickup so there is an online estate sale and they do it auction style so you bid on it and so I bid on these pieces of Choya so they're a cactus skeleton this is a really big one here I didn't even know how big it was gonna be but it turned out to be huge it's like eight foot so it just barely fit in the back of our truck and then there's another little piece here and then we have some different items in here. I need to get some new tea lights because I don't like the red, but I would totally replace those with white. And then this is a rain stick. Isn't that neat? I love that. And then there's some other pieces in here so I can do some decorating with those. But yeah, I just really like that they were cactus skeleton and I thought it'd be fun to decorate with these. I like the, the you know, adding the earthy elements inside the house. Did you see there's an airplane? Can you try and save that? Oh, um, I think it's dead. Yeah, it's all crispy. Can't have you don't approve of the red all. either? Okay, we'll leave the cactus skeleton there for now and I'll work on that later. Um, we're gonna go back out. Michael is looking for a kettle because he hasn't been able to have his coffee. He needs to be able to heat his water. So he's looking for a gooseneck kettle uh, for the hot water. All right guys, we just decided we're gonna switch our bedroom. We want this to be our room um, because this room, um, it does have some lights like across the road here that kind of come in here just a little bit. And we could block that out more, but I'm not gonna be hanging any curtains or anything. And we actually like the idea of having this be our room. We just cleared the bed out from that room and now it's in here. We're gonna get a mattress <laughs> sometime. <laughs> right now we're still sleeping on the floor. And then out here, um, we brought the Choya in. The Choya would look at that thing. That is huge. I really love it a lot though. I think that's so cool. Like look at the texture of it up close. Like what? How cool is that? And then we have to go to Ikea. Um, I have a list for Ikea for things that we need for the house. Um, one of them is going to be a tiered plant stand. I'm going to get one more ponytail palm, the same size. And so I'll have three of the same uh, type of plant. So it'll be three ponytail palms and it'll be a white tiered um, display form. FedEx just arrived with my rug. This is a Safavia and or Safavia. Yeah, anyway, here I'll show you. Okay, so here's the brand Safavia. Um, so this is the California Shag Rug. So it's seven and a half by nine and a half. Yeah, it just needs to kind of like relax a bit more and then I'll kind of stretch it out and smooth it out a bit. So there's two things that Michael has said in the past two days that I wanted to catch on camera, but I just missed it. So what did you just say? More plants. More plants was more one. More white carpet. And more white. More plants and more white. So are you still going to Ikea tomorrow with me? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't even mention where I got the rug. Yeah, I ordered that on Overstock. Dot com and a really good price. It actually beat Costco's price. Hey guys, I'm in Home Depot right now looking at the cactus and I just found these, uh, the prickly pear snows for $25 for the big ones instead of 40. They were 40 at the nursery, but I'm gonna get, I think this one here. 
that one is a really good specimen and it's really healthy too so I think we'll go with that one. Now I just need to find a pot and repot it.